everyone, and a long-awaited welcome back from Evansville, Indiana's Washington Square Mall. I'm your cruise director, Kristen, and this is 1987 at its best preserved. I don't remember the last time I was in a mall with this much glowing, working neon. This video was filmed over two visits, one when we were on our way back from St. Louis back in July, and the other the weekend of October 26th. Not much changed in three months. Unfortunately, the one I did notice is that the fountain has been drained since my first visit. Press F for respect, kids. Washington Square Mall was Indiana's first enclosed mall, opening in 1963. It was designed by Erie Investments and was originally anchored by Sears and an A&P supermarket. In 1969, the south end of the mall was reconfigured to add a two-story Stewart dry goods to replace the A&P. In 50 years, the south anchor has been home to a total of six tenants, one of the highest amounts of turnover I've seen in one anchor space. Stewart Dry Goods was merged into Ellis Airs in 1980 and closed in 1992. In 1993, the anchor space was remodeled into an elder beerman and remained until 2000. The last tenant was Merchants Outlet Mall, a sort of indoor flea market with 500 vendor spaces. The other anchor, Sears, was at the mall for 55 uninterrupted years, closing in 2018. One of the factors that has caused this mall to fall from grace was the existence of a second, newer mall about 20 minutes north of here, Eastland Mall, that opened in 1982. In 1987, this mall received interior and exterior cosmetic improvements and the addition of about 50,000 square feet of retail space. That's when the neon and the Teflon tent-style roof was added to the food court. Why do you come to Washington Square Mall? Well, my wife is always down here. I come with her sometimes to get my work clothes. I can even get my tools here. A lot of times I just get a soft drink, sit back, listen to the kids in the food court sing. It's just real nice here. It's not just a place to go, it's more like coming home. Welcome home, oh, welcome home to Washington Square. Washington Square has served the city of Evansville well as a sort of community hub, being home over the years to a children's museum, a medical facility, a branch of the local library, a community art gallery, and would regularly host singers and musicians in the food court from the local college. It sounded really unusual to me in the commercial you just heard about listening to kids sing in the food court, but they were there most weekends during the late 80s and the early 90s. This mall made national news in 1991 when a story about the mall's owner starting a mall walkers club that charged $10 of membership fee for the privilege of walking before 9 a.m. This change was very upsetting to the local mall walking community, especially after morning vandalism was cited as one of the reasons. An editorial in Indianapolis's newspaper at the time responded, No grannies are heaving rocks through the boutique windows, no retirees are scrolling indecencies on the wall or leaving behind a trail of empty beer cans. This policy was over before it began, and to this day, mall walkers comprise a majority of the foot traffic in here. During this century, the mall has been sold twice, once in 2002 to local real estate investors led by Gene Hahn. They endeavored to fill the mall back up, and based on a 2011 video, they had somewhat succeeded, with many of the inlines occupied by local retailers. In 2013, they unveiled plans to demolish the former LS Ayers slash Elder Beerman space and turn it into exterior-facing stores and a supermarket. This plan obviously never materialized, and in 2016, the mall was sold to its current owner, a New York-based developer under the name Evansville Holdings, LLC. Very little can be found about who actually owns it and what else they own. I dug around for a while and didn't find much information of note. Now to this food court, which is pure late 80s and may be the most vaporwave place I've ever been in real life. It was raining when I was here, and the thin film of a roof makes you feel like you're in the ocean when it's really coming down. Either that or the ghost of the fountain was making itself known.
What's interesting to me is that these amazing chairs seem to have come about sometime after the food court was remodeled because in a commercial I saw for the mall that aired shortly afterward, the chairs were white metal. Whenever they showed up, I'm glad they're still here. The corner space you see here with the mirrored front was last a brewery that closed sometime between 2011 and 2016. This food court is absolutely stunning any time, but you can't truly appreciate its beauty until you've seen it at night. As I mentioned earlier, we visited Evansville on our way back from St. Louis in July, along with this very unusual small town, Casey, not Casey, Illinois. They've made their town a landmark by installing very large, record-breaking things along their main street. Among them are the world's largest rocking chair, wind chime, mailbox, gavel, knitting needles, crochet hook, golf tee, and pitchfork, along with many other very large items that don't quite break the world record. The addition of the items has caused the main street to bloom with shops and restaurants, and you can even rent golf carts to see the big things. If you're passing through, it's worth a stop. One of the town's residents, Jim Bolin, began building very large things with the town in 2009, starting with the wind chime. He wanted to save the town after several factories and businesses had closed. All of the big things are built by hand in a workshop behind the giant wind chime right in town. On weekends in the summer, the streets are full of curious tourists who've come to see what the big deal is. In order to make the Guinness Book of World Records, the items have to be functional, and you can visit the mailbox and buy a pre-stamped postcard to mail from the world's largest mailbox. There's a lesson here for malls, too. Don't do what everyone else is doing. Think outside the box and do something truly unique. Make sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already, and share this video with your friends if you think they'd like it too. Our channel is funded partly by Patreon donations. If you'd like to become a patron, please see the link in the description. From both of us at Unicom, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.